Welcome everyone to the next gripping episode of Chat Grapple and Cheap Pops podcast. I am Chris Dredd here with my main man, J. J. B. Uh, it is a, a welcome to 2021 episode, man. How are you doing? Welcome to 2021. Uh, thank you. Uh, welcome <laughs> to 2021, indeed. Um, for those that said, oh, 2021 is going to be my year, it's going to be much better, you were wrong. You're, you're dead wrong. We are back in a national lockdown here in the UK or in England as such, and uh, life isn't exactly sweet for a lot of people. So, Indeed, yeah. You know, here we are. So, I mean, we, it's, a, it's a break from the scheduled programming. I mean, we do have a show that we were going to do. We're, we're reviewing next with uh, Re a WrestleMania, uh, WrestleMania 5, which is going to be coming up. But we thought, do you know what? Another shorter episode for people. I mean, we had the outro episode and our uh, Grappy Awards um, at the end of 2020. Now we've got like an introduction, welcome to 2021 episode bit of fun just uh maybe to grab some new listeners in a little treat for all the old listeners um we're not going to be hitting you up with a two-hour show tonight but um yeah it's just a, a little intro to this uh, year that we call 2021 we've got a bit of news and um probably going to flash off some bits of memorabilia and that and just uh, have a laugh basically and just have a chat yeah so here we are it's one of those you know it's, it's it's first and foremost happy new year to everyone that's listening or watching um we hope that everyone's doing all right, considering the the shit housery that we've been dealt with. You know, it's 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 like I said earlier a minute ago, it's rough for a lot of people. Don't don't suffer in silence. Our DMs are open. Say hello. Slide in. Slide yeah. in, bro. Slide on in. Slide um, on in. Slide on in. You know, I'm gonna say it straight away. Thank you for our most successful episode. It is our most the grappies. Viewed, yeah, the grappies. They uh, they picked up some steam. It is our most viewed uh, episode so so far. You know, hopefully so far. So. That's right. And and like we always say, you know, if 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 you're listening, if you're watching, please, please, please do us a subscribe because. This year, we really do want to push on. I mean, we were born last year. Um, some people say we were born yesterday, but we were born last year, Chat Grapple and Cheap Pops podcast. Um, and we want to just keep pushing on. And like we always say, Jordan, we don't want their money, do we? We got Never. no Patreon. We, we, got don't no, we, we don't want their money. We want YouTube's money. So do us a little favor. Touch the bell. Go on, touch it. It's just down there. Um, uh, you know, you can fucking mute us if you want afterwards. We don't care. Just yeah. touch the goddamn it, bell. It, it, it um, let us run. That's it. Just let us go with it, man. You won't even know we're there. But if you like it, I mean, we, we've got a huge amount of views on the last video. We get a, a nice amount of views every week. And even if half of those people just subscribed, we will be at that magical 1,000 number. We're currently not. So please, guys, if you're watching this video, just subscribe. Touch the bell. Do it now. Flap our bell, please. Don't delay. Oh. Touch the bell today. Also, if you're watching on YouTube, remember to like, comment, you know, dislike. Subscribe. That's right. Just like, bit, of, bit know, of interaction. Some sort of savage cut on us, you know, tell us how stupid we look, how whatever. It doesn't matter. That's you right. Know, like, <laughs> it just, doesn't matter. It just, really don't. Just engage. Like, we love it. Um, you can also catch us. You know, we're we're very we're very social people as such on the uh, on the social media. Like, you can catch us on uh, Twitter and Instagram at Chat Grapple Pops, and there's a Facebook group as well of the same name, Chat Grapple and Cheap Pops Podcast. Can't miss us. You know, where we post a lot of random things, like wrestling related. Obviously, it's not just Chris swinging his shirt around. You know, no, absolutely not. not again. <laughs> <laughs> no one wants to see that, bro. 
<laughs> well, never say never, Chris. Never say never. Who knows, man? Who knows? <laughs> we spoke about this just before we decided to start recording. Chris, you've not watched much wrestling this week. <laughs> I ain't, you know what? I ain't, bruv. You, you know, we, we've been uh, locked down again. Uh, my business has been forced to close. Um, I am currently spending most of the day in pyjamas, um, trying to do homeschooling uh, with the youth them. Uh, so it's, yeah, man, it's just been, a, I literally haven't had time to do anything this week. I've seen a couple of bits and bobs, a couple of clips, um, a good clip from MJF talking to Hagar, um, some other little bits and bobs, uh, odds and sods. Um, yeah, but I, I literally haven't watched any wrestling this week. Uh, uh, I managed to catch a little bit. I uh, I uh, already said to Chris, like I think it was Monday morning, I saw Twitter was a little bit live with Wrestle Kingdom. So popped downstairs, turned it on, had a little look. It was it was some good there was some good stuff. There were some decent bits and pieces. Some not so great. You know, as usual, there's one guy in particular who seemed apparently doesn't want to sell. Doesn't matter if he's against a top star. Um say it. Say who it is. Oh I don't like I don't like him anyway. I'm not gonna bring up his name. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say in that match, Okada was great. <laughs> so there you go. Um, you know, I, I saw, you know, uh, Tanahashi against great Okan. Um, Tanahashi's timeless, let's be honest. Geezer is still in ridiculous shape for what, 44? He's fucking oh, mustard. Yeah, he's he's uh, fucking mustard. I mean, he might have won an award or two if he was on our show this week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Defo. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you one thing that I have seen that I am going to be watching, which is Bailey on the Broken Skull Ranch. That's something that I will uh, be yes, catching up on. Coming up. Um, I saw I saw a small trailer for it. It does look quite fun. Yeah, man. Yeah. Defo. I did I did I see Snoop Dogg do a frog splash? A dog Dogs, splash. Dog splash, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, Snoop Dogg did a yeah. Uh, had a brief cameo in, in AEW this week on Dynamite, the part of the New Year's night one or whatever, night two. Yeah. Yeah. Um and yeah, it was a it was a decent week for wrestling. I think, you know, not too bad. Some good stuff, some terrible stuff too. Um, um we've we've also now got Goldberg creeping his his head in again, haven't we? We this is another thing maybe we can talk about. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, we can we can get to that in a little while because there is a little bit more to to come with some WWE stuff, right? Um, like I said, AEW though, I need to I need to get this get to them first. Do it. They have decided to bring back a version of a group that was very much over in Japan, but again, it only appeals to a smaller audience. It's again the US and UK and, it, it, again know, around the world. They're, yeah, they're they're, they're playing. Yeah, yeah, they're pandering to a very small uh, part of the wrestling community, and um, you know, I mean, we say we say it's the Bullet Club um, that they're trying to um, kind of bring back. But then again, there's some more news as well. Um, people are talking about Marty Skrull. You know about this one? Yeah, so there you go. I mean, we 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 for, won't for those that to... didn't see it and they're listening. It was a big thumbs down. It was a big Marty. thumbs down. So, yeah. you know, Marty Skell has been in the in in the wrestling news recently. Um, he is was a member of the Bullet Club, was he? Maybe. Yeah, I think so. maybe. Um, because when I when I've been seeing people talking about it, they've been talking about him, and then some other people have been chiming in and going, uh, "I don't think he's going to be getting signed up anytime soon." So it's one of those ones yeah. where he had apparently had a dealing with uh, an individual who was extremely young, um, but we don't know the ins and outs of it, so we're not going to talk about it. But this is another thing that has been in the news recently, and you can check it out. You can see, you know, you can see it all over social media. Um, but it's just another name that's been popped up when they were talking about this Bullet Club thing. The, the thing with the Bullet Club is it is it worth them doing this? 
I mean, they've brought in, and I use this term. I mean, I don't, I don't dislike them. I think they're a great tag team, but perennial sidekicks in Gallows and Anderson. Yeah. They are just, they've always been sidekicks to me. Like, you know, they were, they were doing jobs, you know, for AJ Styles when they were in WWE. Like they, they looked pretty, pretty goofy. It didn't work. You know, they, they, yeah, they, yeah, they had a great run in Japan, but you know, the only, a lot of the times the memorable stuff was the stupid stuff that, you know, Anderson was doing, looking at Maria and all that, you know, those sort of bits and pieces. Uh-huh. And they come straight back in, they come into AEW, you know, whether it's a proper deal or just a quick, like, sort of trade-off for Kenny going to Impact. And straight away, they're, they're side-kicking it up. They're helping, yeah. you know, the, the guy on top. Yeah. So, I mean, it, for me, again, it is another situation where AEW are trying to pop the Smarks, bro. They're, they're, that, that's it. They're, 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 they're trying to pop the Smarks. End of. Um, so, I mean, whether it'll work or not, you know, it's not going to help them grow their demographic. It's not going to help them get any more viewers. And this is another thing that I wanted to talk about, about AEW. Now, it was unfortunate, obviously, that the last episode previous to this one, just gone, was actually the Brody Lee tribute episode. And did that get a million views or was it bloody close? It was very close, like razor thin. It was like nine, nine, nine. It was, a, it was a, I watched the episode. It was a lovely tribute to him. So it was. It was. It was. It was lovely. It was a good. It was a good tribute. And I, but I don't think numbers matter on that sort of thing. No, no, no. But my 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 point is. Um, that even an episode like that where you would have thought that other people that maybe knew him as um, his uh, WWE iteration would have maybe tuned into AEW to check it out. Do you get what I'm saying? But, um, you know, you know, any, any Harper fans might have, you know, maybe... Yeah. Googled and seen that he was a in the AEW and all that because it was in it was all over the news, weren't it? I mean, it was you know it was on mainstream. It was on like BT Sport news and all that. It was on yeah, you know in the stuff, sun. Yeah. It was it was big news. Um, you know, and I just I still I worry I worry that AEW are pandering too much to a very narrow demographic and i think that although they want to be different to wwe they might have to just fucking bite the bullet and just it does try it does feel like we bang this drum a lot and you know if you want to if you want to branch out and expand your market share you know you have to do something that doesn't just appeal to that core audience you have to do some try and do something that brings in fresher sort of fans and fresh fresh money too. Oh, there goes me, Mike. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and, I, and fresh I, money, I yeah. Think, yeah, I, I mean, I think that um, they tried to do it with Snoop Dogg as well. They, yeah, I they, think they, so, they, yeah. that was good. You one. know, it is fucking. It's hilarious to me, dude, that they don't like to be compared to WCW, but they're the ones bringing in these gimmicky celebrities all the fucking time. Who was it that? WWE you know, put Snoop in a couple of times though. They've, they've brought Snoop in a couple of times. They've got, but Snoop's like Sasha Banks' cousin. Yeah. You know that. Um, you know, but they're the one talking about Shaq, you know, and, 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 and bringing in Snoop. And, you know, it just seems like they don't really know who they are yet. Do you get what I'm saying? Like AEW, they're kind of... I get they're trying to find a niche. I get that they're trying to be as different to the WWE product as they possibly can, but wrestling is wrestling. You know what I mean? And as much as WWE want to get away from the wrestling and they want to be known as superstars and sports entertainment, they're wrestlers and they can never get away from that. You know, and it's funny that the match that we picked to be match of the year was one of the most core wrestling matches that you could bloody see. Yeah. You know, it was the, the Dragon Off Volta match that we picked to be match of the year. You can't get much more wrestling than that. You quick, know what I mean? Quick reminder for anyone that hasn't seen that, um, that was our, our undisputed pick for match of the year. Go and check it out. You know, if you haven't seen it, people should have seen it by now. But, yeah. yeah. Uh, 
I've got one more question regarding AEW. It looks like they're going to go with uh, Omega and your man Moxley for the title next, for the, for the next uh, big show as such. Do you care who wins? At this point, no, I don't give a shit. At, at, at this point, um, Moxley's been off TV for too long. Um, he needs to be brought back in a little bit slowly. Omega's not had the um, title for long enough for me to give a shit if he even loses it. Um, so, you know, it's one of them ones where I, I feel, right, listen to me, people, right? Okay, I keep banging this drum. Oh, here we go. Look at this guy, okay? AEW have got MJF, okay? He, he did, there was a little clip where, didn't they have a Wardlow versus Hager match recently? They did, okay? yes. Uh, Wardlow beat Hager. Yeah, but I expected more from that match as well. I'll tell a lie. I have watched some wrestling. I haven't watched a lot of wrestling, but I've, I've watched little bits. I expected more from that match. Wasn't that bad. Wasn't that good, okay? But the, the, the great bit for me was MJF going into the locker room on this little extra bit, you know, and he was like, yeah, he, he, he said to the person with the camera, yeah, you might want to stay back, pencil neck, or something like that, you know what I mean, to this guy who had the camera. And he went in and Hager was kicking off and he said, look, dude, like, you know, I know you're pissed off and all that. He said, but you're the man, man. Don't forget that. He said, you're, 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 you're unbeaten in MMA, you know, just don't forget you're the man, you know? And he's like, he's just... He's just so versatile in what he's doing. Like, I really would love it, yeah? They, they, need to, they need to push him. They need to have the focus of... If they want to be different to WWE, you know what they need to do? They need to stop focusing on the same type of wrestlers that WWE would focus on. You know, they, they would be pushing the Omega or the Moxley, or maybe they'd be going for, like, your Hager or your Wardlow, your slightly bigger dudes. But, you know, they need well, to... They need to have a different champ. They've got to have a different champ to be different. That's my... They've, that's had, my a, they've had a couple of weeks now. Like, you know, barring the the tribute episode, obviously. They've had a couple of weeks to establish a challenger to Kenny Omega. And they haven't. And of course they haven't. Gonna, they're going to jump straight in with the rematch. I don't know, man. Like, they could have done a bit more with someone. They could have stuck someone else in, maybe. Maybe even... Hager, Miro. Wardlow, someone like that, you know, someone else from the inner circle. Or, or even Miro, they're saying they're trying to build him up. He could have had a bit of a slobber knocker with Omega. He might not have won, but if they're trying to build him up, but they've made him look like know, fucking clown shit. He's going to be the best man at a wedding, so... Yeah, but that, that's what I'm trying to say, bruv. It's like all arse about face. So yeah. it does seem like we're banging this drum, but we want AEW to be good. It's not, you know, we... It, we want it to be good. We want them to be different. We want them to be doing well. And we do want them to be hitting more than that million views um, in, in the week. But unfortunately, they're just trying to pander to a, a certain type of um, fan. And they're just not going to expand their, well, um, this their viewership. Week, um, this week's numbers were way down um, on both shows, on NXT and AEW because of what was going on on Wednesday in, you know, in DC, so. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Are you people down there in City Jeez. Hall? Well, it wasn't City Hall, it was Capitol Hill, but still, Capitol I wanted to see some yeah. tenacious things. Um... But, you know, that's a madness, isn't it? We're not a political podcast by any stretch of the imagination, but fucking hell, what a way to start 2021. Yeah. We're not political, but when they keep shoving us in and out of lockdowns, we might get a bit annoyed. <laughs> We might get a little bit annoyed, you know, but it's one of them ones, man. You couldn't, I mean, Vince Russo couldn't have ripped this stuff, could he? You know? Which one, the pandemic or Capitol Hill? All of it. <laughs> all of it. The old year. Couldn't have written it. You know, it, it, it's it been insane, you know? You couldn't have booked it like this. <laughs> right? uh, well, it's it's funny, like, we just had a another lockdown birthday in my house. Um, my eldest son turned five. Yeah, big up the man. Um, his cake, I, I was going to say, his cake, bro, that's child abuse, man. You can't put Arsenal stuff on a cake for a child. It's child abuse, mate. One, they were brownies. <laughs> <laughs> and two, Arsenal just won a game, so give them some credit. 
Did they beat Newcastle? It was nil nil when I was looking. Extra time, two nil. Oh no! All right, fair enough. Yeah, he done we'll all right. He done it because it was nil nil when I checked it. Took him, then. took him 120 minutes to put him away <laughs> in a 90 okay. minute game. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're not a football podcast either. Um, we ain't. Maybe we should start one. You know what I mean? But anyway. Well, yeah. Considering the teams we support, it would be uh, an interesting way to go. Yeah, mate. Um, <laughs> Yeah, lockdown birthday for my son. Um, the amount of wrestling stuff that he got, though, was excellent. He's on the right path, for sure. He'll be, yes. he'll be guesting on this show in, like, you know, 10 years' time. <laughs> nice. You know, shouting just as many F-words and what, and what have you as we do. That's right. But probably calling everyone governor and treacle, so... Nice. Yeah. Can work with that. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, before, before we do switch on to some other stuff, I will talk about the uh, the WWE Slambulance that he got as a gift. Um, my mum got him that. It was... Uh, it's m- so much fun that I'm trying my best not to, like, you know, sit down and start playing with it myself. It's quite, that Slambulance, right? I see, I see the advert. It's like Smith's Toys or the Entertainer for it, right? Yeah. And it looks sick, dude. And... Um, I bought this thing a little while ago. It's like um, it's like um, uh, the little mini uh, figures, the like bouncers or something like that. Rumblers, yeah. Oh yeah, it's rumblers, got yeah. Little rumblers, yeah. And it's like I've got this van. It's like a, a a silver van, and it opens up, and it's got a ring inside it with like a little trampoline, and it's got like the belt hanging on a little um chain and stuff, and you like throw the wrestlers down, then like ping up and smash all through the thing. Oh, dude, it's so sick, man. I bought it for my boy, and I ended up um, playing with it more than he did. But um, I still got that, and it's got, uh, like, Rey Mysterio, a John Chayna. Um, yes. Um, you know, He got stuff. 15 figures, you know, for his birthday. Like, so we did we did all right. Um, Tell him to keep a mint in the box, bro. I know he's only five <laughs> or whatever, but just... Uh, no, you're not playing with him. You're keeping him in the box, son. You can't leave him. him. five <laughs> <laughs> you see him like creeping down at night trying to open him. You're like, ah, <laughs> leave him. But I think I think we're just going to have separate sort of uh, collections, <laughs> which which works for me. One for me, one for daddy. That's Basically, it. Basically, <laughs> yeah. Um, well, if we're if we're on the subject of uh, toys, games, and what have you, I know you've got stuff to show me. I've got lots of stuff. We, I just thought, you know what. We, in this whole year of podcasts that we've been doing, um, you know, we've shown a couple of little bits and bobs on, on the podcast, but I've just got some really weird stuff that I just like to collect. I'm a sucker. I'm a sucker for a sticker, dude, and a, and a card. Trading you know, card that, and sticker. I just, bruv, I'm, sticker books. As people can see behind me, I've just got sticker books. So you've got the massive giant one that has the mega photo stickers like that. So if you can see, yeah. that's too, you know, too, too cool. That's mint. Um, you know, so that album there, the big one has got, is full of them six by fours. You've got the WCW one there. I've also got, you know, the metal album, these ones here. And I've also got, so I don't just collect the albums. I always try and get, if you can see that, it's right up to the camera. Yeah. This, these are like unopened sticker packs and i just i just love them i don't know why it's like you remember when you was a kid and like you had a couple of quid and these were like 50p a pack and you'd go down there and just that you know that opening of the sticker pack say oh what am i gonna get in this one do you know what i mean like oh what are your swapsies and all that kind of stuff so it's like I, i still have like i've got the original box that you would get in the in the you know, I've got the original box of them that you would get in the shop. You know, and stuff like that. I just absolutely love it. It's uh, I'm a sucker for sticker it. mark got, people. Uh, I'm a sticker mark, dude. I'm a proper sticker mark. And you've got these ones as well, the SmackDown. You know, WWF SmackDown ones. Yeah, they've taken a lot of money off you, haven't they? Dude, you know what, right? <laughs> let me let me tell you something. I I got just before Christmas one of my most prized ones that I'm so, and I just wanted to show a couple of bits off, man, because 
you know, this is what we this is what we love. We love watching the events. We love um, talking about wrestling. But you know, we love memorabilia. And if we had, I mean, this is the gaming room that I share with my my boy so we've got like gaming stuff and that but slowly slowly like there's more wrestling stuff getting put up on the walls and he's like dad it's supposed to be a gaming room and you're putting like wrestling stuff everywhere it's like i'm sorry dude um you know so i've got some nwo figures up there i've got a couple of hogan's or hall and nash but this is what i got before christmas right and it is one of my i'm so happy with it because you can't you couldn't buy them in the uk so as you can see you got the wcw the Euro Flash album that we got in the UK, in America, Canada, and uh, possibly in Europe. I don't know. I don't yeah, think. I, mean, so. I think big, it's big on WCW. But huge, yeah. huge on WC, right, dude? See these little stickers here? Yeah. Panini, Panini WCW, yeah. NWO stickers. Okay. I never saw them here. We never had them in this country, right? So I've got loads of these that are unopened, still in the packet from 1998, 1999, okay? But I've also got this. Hold on to your lug nuts. Well, like an unopened full box, okay? Look and I picked that. these up fairly cheap. There were some of them that some people asking like 50 quid a box or something. And you know I ain't paying 50 quid a box of them. But I'm on a member of loads of like wrestling groups and that. And people just sell stuff. They just had them for years. Um, they've had them in their garage or had them in their loft or whatever. And dude, this, there's a hundred packets in here. Still sealed. And it tells you how to open it and have it how they would in the shop. But I haven't opened these yet. And all it says on there is Canada and America. So distributed in Canada, distributed in the USA. Got the little shiny seal on it yeah. there. So these are, this is something that I picked up just before Christmas that I was like super gassed. So if anyone knows where you can get an album from. Well, that's my next, this is my next thing. I'm going to look for the album for this because they're pretty hard to come by. Um, I have seen a few of them on eBay from time to time, but they're like rocking horse shit, as we say yeah. in this country. Um, you know, so I've got, I ended up, first of all, I found a, a load of the, unopened packets of them and then I, the guy was flogging that unopened box and I was like nah I'm having, I'm having that um, you know so we've got other bits and bobs as well you know talking about WCW massive WCW marks got like unopened boxes of WCW cards yeah so you know. some of those packs we opened on, yep. a, on an episode way back when um, we opened yep we opened the packets of them um, but also, I did want to pimp. I had another channel a little while ago, and it's called Gaming, Grappling, and Good Stuff. So I wanted Jordan to jump on that channel because we could do some cool stuff. Um, you know, we could we could do like a lot of memorabilia stuff on that channel. So I mean, at some point we will be uploading some more well, content on there. I'm, I'm waiting for the day that we're out of lockdown so we can play each other at Wrestlefest. You know. <laughs> <laughs> this is what because on that on that channel, okay, I've got reviews of wrestling games. So I've got like some Wii a Wii wrestling game, which is really good. I've got a load of Super Nintendo games I did. I did a great Dreamcast Attitude game. Um, but I also opened a load of sticker packs. So I've got like boxes and boxes of um of these WCW NWOs. And I opened like 12 or 15 of these sticker packs so some of them have got hogan yeah on them and then some of them have got goldberg <laughs> we will get to goldberg <laughs> so you know and that's what i was doing on that channel so before chat grapple and cheap pops was even born i had a channel there for my memorabilia and my game wrestling and game remind, stuff. remind the beautiful people what uh that that channel's called it is called gaming grappling and good stuff that's what it's called. Um, so you can you can go onto YouTube and just type in gaming, grappling, and good stuff. You'll find my channel on there. It's got a whole um, video of me just opening 
card packs, dude. And that went down really well. Loads of people really loved it because people like to see me just people just opening sticker packs, opening stuff. It's, it's that feeling when you're a kid, when you go to the shop, you got a couple of quid, you buy a few packets, but when you're a grown up, you can just completely waste money on whole boxes and just open them. <laughs> And your mum can't tell you, what have you done with your money? And then it's, normally it's your missus saying, you, you bought yeah. what? <laughs> so, well, um, that's a, that's a fun segue because over Christmas, <laughs> my mum got me a couple of bits. <laughs> oh, <laughs> nice, dude. Yeah, yeah, let's go, baby. So first up, because a few things maybe got lost in transition over the years, I did have a good, I had a couple of these, um, but Hasbro's. I'm mad for Hasbro's and that's a thing. Like, so... She uh, managed to procure me a uh, honky tonk man. Yes, you know, he absolutely. Really and he's honky tonk with the guitar. There's a guitar there. Yeah, he's a uh, he's in great shape. Um, she also because I'm an I'm not an avid pop collector, but I have a couple. Though you might have seen them on previous episodes. Um, oh, dude! It's Nate. Amazing. Um, it's Rick amazing. Here. I know he's not wearing peach. I know it's like you love the peach, but in red and oh, Andre, Andre. baby. And my wrestling fandom also like stretches out to work because a wonderful person from work managed to uh, get me. Oh, that's that's so nice, days. man. That's sick. And he's wearing some god awful jacket, but I'll. Uh... <laughs> when you when you love wrestling so much that everyone that you ever deal with just knows you are the wrestling guy. The it's guy. like I've always been that guy, man, and I love it. <laughs> it's great. And yeah, like you know, it's, that's that's just us. We just we with collectors, we're we're a little bit nerdy. Let's let's be honest, you know, with it. But that's cool, man. Like. We love it, dude. And we, we're going to keep doing it. You know, like, I've, I've, I've recently, I've got a couple more of the, because um, like I said, I don't really buy modern figures. It's usually so like the I'm WWF. Gonna, I'm going to just hit pause on you for just one second, because, that you know, despite us being collectors and being, you know, a little bit nerdy and loving to get as many, like, random things as we can, there are some things that no man should have. <laughs> no man should ever collect and frame and put up in their house. And I'm talking about a Thunder in Paradise poster. That's right, you heard me correctly. Thunder in Paradise, starring Hulk Hogan. I think it was on TNT, possibly. You know, they did, uh, I'm sure they promoted it on Nitro or WCW around that time. Yep. Because one of us on this show has framed a poster of Thunder in Paradise. Yeah, dude. It me. And, and, it, and it weren't Jordan, it was me. <laughs> so, <laughs> I've got it there for all the viewers. Okay, look at him. Look at that beautiful face. Look at Terry. Look. Look at him. Now this. <laughs> there we go. Trust me, bro. He, he's loving it. And this is an original poster as well from the video stores in the 90s, dude. This is not no reproduction print. This is an original, man. Um, I've also got the original poster, which is going up in my house as well at some point, of Mr. Nanny. So I've got the original, and it's not that little one either. It's the big movie cinema poster, dude. It's absolutely huge. You remember what and I just said? Well, there's, there's things that no man should collect. <laughs> <laughs> I go for the weird and wonderful wrestler. And, you know, people know that, you know, if you listen to our podcast, that I'm not the biggest Hulk Hogan mark. Um, no, he kept running but, off to Jack Tone every five minutes. Yeah, of course he did, you know, showing, you know, sliding under the ring, like playing charades. Oh, but, geez. you know, I, I just love, I mean, even that, I've got the Hulkamania TNA ring in the background, you oh, know. Why? Because I just, I just love it. Look at it. It's amazing. But also, did you hear about people talking about um, Shark Boy possibly being in AEW? I did. And I, I you ain't, you ain't busting any extra viewers. Getting Shark Boy on your TV show. I'm sorry. Bro, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what. Right. Some of the hottest, um, some of the hottest uh, vignettes and little mini skits and that that TNA ever did was Shark Boy and um, oh, Matey Boy from the Gangsters. Um, New Jack. New Jack. 
right? New Jack and Shark Boy, if you can imagine, dude. Like Shark Boy, at that time, he wasn't even speaking either. So like one of the skits was like Shark Boy in an inflatable paddling pool, right? They were tagging together or whatever. And it's like Shark Boy's in there and he's like saying to New Jack, yeah, get, get in the paddling pool, mate. You know what I mean? <laughs> and he ends up jumping in with him and stuff. Like they end up playing games together. Like it is some of the best TV you can watch. Go on YouTube and type in Shark Boy and New Jack TNA and you will see some absolute gems. You have like New Jack completely out of his element um, to coin a phrase from my favourite movie of all time, which is The Big Lebowski. Um, yeah. He's completely out of his element, like Donnie. Um, but it's amazing. It's just it's just great stuff. Um, and I am a fan of Stone Cold Shark Boy. I know a lot of people ain't, but that's the fishing line because Shark Boy said so. Sorry, it's great. <laughs> and with that, we will move on. Um... <laughs> Um, also, um, we're talking actually, about there is there is a tie oh. involving TNA um, because WWE are heading up uh, a WWE India spectacular. I think they're trying to set up maybe a a promotion, some sort of thing over there. Um, and all it reminded me of was Scott Steiner. <laughs> it's the thing you told me about, and I went and <laughs> sought it out, and it's Scott Steiner going crazy at fans <laughs> in India, like just <laughs> absolutely mad. So. I'm wondering if WWE have got still got Scotty's number. I, I hope so, dude. Maybe bring him in. That maybe Vince was just, you know, scrolling through YouTube and he's just seen Scott Steiner at Ring Kaking just completely losing the plot, having like Magnus, um, aka Nick Aldis, just having to like hold him back from literally strangling. Oh, dude, it's uh, here, I'll talk about Scott Steiner. Here's another little beauty. Look at that. That's a that's a mint. Uh, is that uh, that's the uh, old San Francisco toy toy com- toy makers, isn't it? It is indeed. Yeah. It is um, the uh, toy makers San Francisco original uh, Scotty Steiner. Uh, it's mint as well. I yeah, mean, that's, that's really it's nice. absolutely mint. It's in well good condition. But I've also got a TNA Scott Steiner there as well, just in the background. If you can just see you it can, underneath you can the see room. that one. Yeah, that's a yeah, great little figure that is as well. So, NXT. Yeah, baby. Uh, New Year's Evil uh, came and went. Uh, Finn Balor and Kyle O'Reilly had another really good match. Uh, Finn comes out still champion. Damian Priest and uh, Karrion Cross. I almost called him Killer Cross then. Uh, Karrion Cross. You know, yeah. Um, they opened the show. Had a fairly decent match. It was okay. Um, but all the all the talk is of Priest going over to SmackDown or going to the main roster. Good move. I mean, for for me, it's it's give people a shot, man. Give them a shot. You know, you you never know it. You never know until you do it. You know, yeah. and um, you know, you never know what the chemistry is going to be like. How they might, you know, how they might be. So yeah, I mean, what's the what's the what's the hurt really? Fuck the other thing I'm I'm not you know I'm not mad about it like it doesn't affect me in any way but I feel like NXT has the better wrestling on a Wednesday night they put on better wrestling matches and the ratings don't reflect that so what's what's missing what are they doing wrong um that's a very good question um I, 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 if I'm honest with you, it's probably because it mainly appeals to a specific demographic of fans. And yeah. you're going to get that core audience will always tune in because they want to see that kind of wrestling. Um, and, and, and that's it. You know, it is a specific, you know, but for WWE, it's, they've got two other shows that will then appeal to other different demographics of fans. So with AEW, they've got one one show, really, um, you know, that appeals to that specific type. And it's probably the same people watching AEW that are watching NXT, to yeah. be fair. I mean, 
let's not beat around the bush. You get a lot of people that say they only watch AEW or that, you know, and they've started watching TNA now because of the crossover or whatever, whatever, but it's bullshit. And like people that watch AEW are clearly watching NXT. I know many, many people that were watching NST religiously, NXT religiously, and then they, they started watching AEW and they, they, they love AEW because it is, I mean, I, that's what I think it is. It's, it just appeals to a specific audience and that same audience will just watch it. You, I, I doubt you're going to get your, your teens and your younger viewers watching um, NXT over SmackDown and Raw. Yeah. I just, you know, it, it's one of them ones, you know. Um, I just think that's why. I think it is literally you've got your core audience for that. Um, just because of the type of show it is, really. It's a, uh, it's our most favourite time of the year. I uh, forget Christmas, forget you know, all of that stuff. It's Royal Rumble season. That's right, baby. It, it is always one of the standout matches of any year. Royal Rumbles are always fun. They're always got something to talk about. Always some sort of spot, or you know, even. 2020 Royal Rumble, Rock Le- Brock Lesnar doing, you know, getting rid of the first 14 or 15 people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, then, uh, and then getting put out by, you know, our, one of our wrestlers of the year, Drew McIntyre. What's your favourite Royal Rumble? We've, we've, we've said this before. I mean, I'm, I'm a Ric Flair mark. <laughs> and, you know, no, 19, 1992. Was was just a, it was a great one. I mean, I think pretty much that was your shout for it as well. It was you know, yeah, woo, you know, it's for for with a, me. The tear in his eye. It, it's it's beautiful, you know, and yeah. and to be fair as well, I picked up another DVD the other day. I've got them on VHS, but SummerSlam '92. Yeah, that's uh... in the UK was another great one, which was around that time. Um, well, Flair didn't work that show, which was quite annoying. He, no, but he did a promo, didn't he? Yeah, he cut a and promo. He, he, he turned up at ringside, but yeah, he didn't get to work a match, which was no. It w- yeah. yeah, it sucks, man, because they were saying, "Why are you dressed like that? Why are you in your gear?" And he goes, "Cause you never know, you know." Like that promo is just amazing. Like he's to catch in a briefcase. Yeah, dude, you know he knew because he, he was talking about Mister Perfect, weren't it? Because yeah. there was, you know, the whole thing with Perfect. But for me, you've got Bobby the Brain Heenan made that. 1992 Royal Rumble match, what it was. Yeah, 92 Rumble was excellent. Yeah. Um, it, it was fantastic, you know, the way he's like, how long's he been in there now? You know, he, you know, he's just constantly just, you know, going back to it and the, you know, it, what a man, what a man he is. Although, you know, although it, it does it does involve our chief complainer complaining about things towards at the end, so, you it, know, <laughs> I'm surprised, he, yeah, he probably went straight to Jack Tunney's office. Uh, <laughs> I did. I was watching back um, a couple of Royal Rumbles this week. You know, I like to watch them just to, you know, get in the mood and uh, yeah. see, sort of like bringing it along. And 2007, whilst the the main part of the Rumble wasn't great, the the final moments, and I tweeted about this a couple of days ago. Yeah. Shawn Michaels and The Undertaker, just, it was red hot. Like, unbelievable like finish to a Royal Rumble last two guys they went at it for for quite a while it wasn't just like you know there's two guys left one just gets dumped out straight away it was so good um so that one that one comes pretty close it was pretty uh it was a really good ending it just doesn't doesn't go the whole way like Flair does from number three or you know yeah it does but who's your pick for this year man I mean the, the, are they doing with the rumbles? <clears throat> are they having? Is it like um, you know, an intergender thing now that they're going to be trying to push, or is it still going to be? Oh no, no, it's not, is it? Two separate, yeah, men's and women's, yeah. I mean, um, I I really ain't got a clue. I mean, you know, maybe Orton or someone like that, you know. Yeah. Um. um it, it depends who they're going to be pushing. I um, I sort of I may I chuckled at this because I I thought I'm almost certain I read something about Daniel Bryan being part of the creative team on SmackDown, so it wouldn't surprise me if he won the Rumble. Yeah, 
<laughs> not yeah. like bookers. It's not like bookers book themselves, is it? No, we, no, no, no. Never had that. That's, you, I don't know where you get your ideas from. Um, <laughs> Booker man. Booker man. I don't um, know. <laughs> we've mentioned it a couple of times. Goldberg is back on the show. Uh, oh, he's back on Raw. He went straight after Drew McIntyre. For me, it's, you know, it looks more like entitled veteran jumps the queue for a title shot more than, you know, because there's, there's other guys on that show that could have, on Raw, that could have gone up against Drew. doesn't have to be Goldberg, does it? And uh, Goldberg's got to put him over, so it seems pointless. Is he going to? I mean, you'd like to think so because I'm, Drew's I'm had a hell of. Not. <laughs> this is the thing. That, that doesn't work for me, brother. He learned oh. from the best. You know, <laughs> not gonna work for me, brother. You know, maybe, maybe Goldberg's not gonna put him over. He should, you know, and I think it would be a mistake for WWE to 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 allow Goldberg to have it. But who knows, dude? This is wrestling, dude. Something else that came about last night. Um, it looks like Roman Reigns' challenger at Royal Rumble is going to be Adam Pearce. Oh, great. Um, it's weird because obviously Adam Pearce has been running around doing... Uh, he's pumping. He's pumping his iron. Um, <laughs> Adam Pearce has been doing like a backstage role, sort of a, an executive sort of thing. And, you know, he's not worked a match. And now he's going to be working well they've got time to change it they got to the 31st but he's been positioned as the man to challenge Roman Reigns it's it It seems a bit pointless doesn't it yeah Yeah. like they had a whole gauntlet you know of other other big names last night Nakamura looked excellent and then they went with Adam Pearce Adam Pearce don't get me wrong NWA world champion you know he's been the guy you know Un, not so unfairly, maybe when the NWA wasn't thriving, the NWA title wasn't super relevant. Yeah, um, it's just my opinion. Um, so he obviously can go, he can work, but I'm struggling to find how how many people knew who he was until he turned up on WWE's like vignettes and stuff. Yeah, yeah it's. You know, who knows why they do what they do sometimes, yeah. you know, especially with this guy getting a bloody title shot. That doesn't Sorry, I haven't got any, ain't got any sparklers, <laughs> so he's got no smoke behind him. He'll have a title belt on him in a couple of weeks. Yeah, he will. <laughs> oh, don't say that. Yeah, sit there um, and shush, Goldberg. 2021, have you got a pick for breakout star? I'm, it can't I, be MJF I, again. It, oh, come on, man. I was going to pick MJF. No, I'd like to see Abaddon. I'd like to see Abaddon um, <laughs> break out. I'd like, I'd like to see... Because uh, I love the gimmick. I think it's sick. But do you know what annoys me again? Not being booked correctly. Not being used correctly. She doesn't say nothing. Where's her manager? She needs... Someone, you know, what I'm saying, she, yeah. if you've got someone who's got that That's kind cool. of look, yeah, just... she's got to have a manager. She needs someone to be pulling her on a lead, bro. She needs someone who's. I don't know about that one. <laughs> no, you know what I mean? Like, because she's seen as like this animal, this savage, yeah? You yeah. know, the whole look and everything. You know, um, who I she thought. Comes um, from the backstage area, just like, yeah, from the dressing room, like with everyone else. It doesn't. No, she needs yeah. to be coming out of the, the sewers or the or bloody boiler room or something. Do you know what I mean? Under she the rig, to, yeah, anything. Yeah, under the rig. You know, like, um, who's that guy that was um, uh, Mitchell? You know, um, someone like that who can play that kind of demonic kind yeah. of, you know, that, that that's what she needs. She needs someone, you know, like a dark fairground. Like, say, yeah, I found her, you know, she was living, she was in, the, and then she was in my freak show, you know, maybe some kind of circus gimmick, you know. And, um, you know, I lost her and now I found her in AEW. They, she needs, listen, whoever's booking, Cody, um, you it's know, fucking Jeff, yeah. 
Jerry Lynn, she needs a mouthpiece. She needs a manager. Give her a manager because at the minute, like the feuds that she's having are kind of dead because there's only so much you can do with someone who isn't saying anything, um, a.k.a. Yokozuna. You know, so they had to bring in Jim Cornette because he had Mr. Fuji, but Mr. Fuji could hardly string a bloody sentence together either. And then when you bring in Cornette, the American spokesperson, it just, you know what I mean? It just raises the level because wrestling just ain't in the ring. You know, wrestling's yeah. on the mic. Wrestling is building up that story. So if anyone's watching from AEW, because I know there's probably a couple of the guys in the booking team that maybe watch Jack Rappel and Cheap Pops podcast, yeah. Um, yeah. give her a mouthpiece, give her a manager, give her someone who will um, be able to talk for her, play up the story a bit more, because no one knows where she's from, what she's been doing, where she's Parts come unknown, from. Parts unknown, man. Parts unknown. That's it. Parts unknown. Like, look, <laughs> the warrior, you know. <laughs> But yeah, I mean that that's who I'd like to see, maybe. You know, because it's yeah, an, that's in, that's in, an interesting, interesting sort of shout. Yeah. yeah. I am. Um, I I How about you. Well, I wrote the question down and I, I went back and forth between a couple. I thought about Sammy Guevara and I just I'm I'm a bit more worried that Sammy's gonna get lost in the shuffle this year. Like you know, there's parts of the inner circle that are ready to break out and you know, obviously, could MJF eventually feud with Jericho? Yes. You know, Wardlow has a, and I, I use the term very, very loosely, like it's almost Batista esque sort of qualities. You know, whether or not he's got that Batista charisma, we'll, you know, we'll see, we'll later on see. It could be his year, it could be a breakout for, for him. You, you know what would be great, dude? I think. With Sammy, they've tried to go a certain way with him, and it seems he's been a bit lost in the show. It would be nice to maybe go the other way and for him to just be like, do you know what? Screw this. Fuck all of you. I'm going to be an arsehole now. It, it, MJF is getting all this credit for being an arsehole. I'm going to be an arsehole. <laughs> Put them together. Let them win the tag championship belts. Take, take, the, take, take the tag. Have Sammy and MJF maybe as tag champs. The two arseholes. You know, being complete oh, jerks. You're talking about Sammy and um, MJF or the Bucks? Bro, you know, <laughs> you know, because I, I mean, I, I'm not a fan of the Bucks myself. Nope. I think it's just, you know, it's one of them ones. AEW needs to be a bit different and, and give their titles to people that are a bit different. And, you know, how good would that be? A heel, a real heel Sammy Guevara and MJF, just the two complete jerk-offs, which is like your complete antithesis to yeah. your Bucks, you know, who are supposedly heels, but not really, you know, um, we're looking like, uh, you know, some knockoff rockers, um, you know, rock and roll express jack-offs. Um, you know, it's one, <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't help it, man. But, you know, I just want to see some more different ideas, some outside the box stuff, you know, just think outside the box a little bit more, man. Try and go a bit different. I mean, you've got the inner yeah. circle, which could be a great heel faction, but they're not healy enough. They're too ha ha. Yeah, it's a little bit too much fun being had. Too much fun, bro. Yeah. Be dickheads. So I was, yeah, I was torn. I was torn between Sammy and uh, my other one. You know, she almost broke out last year. You know, but Rhea Ripley. Yeah, got a big chance. If you can get onto that main roster, she's she's going yeah. places. So, and yeah, that's uh, I mean, what else yeah. have we got to talk about apart from? I know, man, we could we could just shoot the shit all day. I'll tell you what, I will do. I will. I I put this up on. Um, I've got something else to show you. Talking we about did, dark we did characters. Talk about this, yes. Look at that cute. Look at that beautiful man there. Look. That. Shout, out, <laughs> shout out to Gangrel every single time, man. Like, you know, one of the best gimmicks ever. The geezer's still in great shape. He's got a wrestling school that he works at. And this is me and the man Gangrel. There's the pen that I got from the day. The ticket in St Albans Arena in Hertfordshire. Ooh, St Albans. And the SummerSlam wrestling. There you go. <laughs> yeah. So... Now I have a quick question about the uh, about the injured eye that uh, Gangrel has there. Yeah. Is this 
Is this something that you did to Gangrel? Because hey, uh, I mean, I know you've got a, you've got a history of injuring people in the wrestling business. I just work <laughs> snug, out, man. Shout out to my man Max on this one. <laughs> I work snug. That's it. Do you know what I mean? I just work snug. What? Um, no, it wasn't me. Um, I, I, it, it's a pretty meaty looking eye as well. It's it pretty bruised sense. up, man. Yeah, uh, it wasn't me with a spinning back kick. No, um, it was, <laughs> unfortunately, um, I did not damage uh, Mr. Gangrel. But um, yeah, man, that I just wanted to show that off because I'm really happy with it. It's one of them ones. But again, it just makes me think. When the hell are we going to be able to get out and go to some fucking shows, man? Yeah. God damn. It, 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 it's, a, <laughs> it's quite depressing that we're not able to, you know, hook up and talk about stuff in person, go to a wrestling show. I know that um, Cody Rhodes recently spoke about Fighter Fest was originally planned to be in the UK. But wow. But obviously couldn't, couldn't do it. And that was... a. Uh, which I mean, and that, we take the we take the mic, we make our comments and stuff. But an AEW sh any show at the minute in the UK would be greatly we said, appreciated. We, yeah. we said, you know, we might knock them to a point, but we still watch their product. We, we still, you know, we've, we we still want them to be great. You know, it's one of them things that you know, we we still fantasy book in our heads between our two. We don't put it on Twitter and all that kind of shit, but we speculate about what could be done and that, you know, we want it to be good. And, you know, we we said in another episode, if AEW were to come over, we let's, wouldn't hesitate. Let's be honest, we come from an old school booking sort of like uh, idea set. Like it's never, never anything wild, like putting your, putting your world title on a, you know, David Arquette or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, you know, is a, you know we we would we put our hands in our pockets we'd buy a ticket and we'd go because we 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 do support wrestling you know we pay we pay for the network you know we buy AEW figures you know when they come over and do shows you know so you know, I haven't bought a wrestling show in a while though but I should probably you haven't bought no a t-shirt yeah like you know I mean uh for some reason just yeah it's not been not been high on the list of things to get no I mean uh beginning of last year i bought um i got this thing that i'm your yeah. pappy t-shirt i got a, a nwo wolf pack one i got um a lay of the smack of down rock t-shirt from on the euro store um you know there, there's some independent t-shirts that i might get yeah. um you Always, know yeah, to be nice. honest i i really i really want to get like a a, a sasha banks t-shirt man <laughs> or a Bailey one, you know, like so, you know. But it just seems like we're we're giving money to the big company. Well, if, but... if it makes you feel any better, I, I want the sun, sunset skip T-shirt. I know it was Dude, I would... some, but Wait, I'm I'm glad you size. put. Yeah, I'm glad you brought this up as well. Yeah, because we're obviously friends with Sunset Skip. He was one of our trainers. And um, I saw on Facebook and then on Twitter that he he found some T-shirts, some. Um, sunset skip t-shirts and we just missed out on him because by the time i'd seen it it was two hours gone and he was dishing them out so sunset skip bro if you find any more t-shirts <laughs> man come on son yeah um you know we, we just need uh, the sunset skip t-shirt to go with the limo rickshaw one that we've got well yeah the limo rickshaw t-shirts are the one they are <laughs> the, one. the greatest t-shirts you'll never see that's <laughs> right baby fresh from tijuana and I get, I mean, I guess that's it for us. Like, you know, like I said, shorter episodes, you know, lots of, you know, a bit quicker, a bit more fun. Yeah. You know, welcome to, to 2021. Yeah, yeah, welcome to 2021. Lockdown sucks. Let me, right. let me remind everyone to support your favourite podcasters and your local businesses. 100%, bro. Oh, yeah. Support your, your local podcast by touching their bells. So we can't say it enough, guys. If we get like, you know, 4K views on a video, even if like 10% of those people just subscribe, that would bump us up then again to that magical number 1,000 because we've still got to do this giveaway, dude, but I'm still sticking to my guns and I don't want it to be done until we get that 1,000 subscribers. I wish I could say it was easy to do a giveaway. I can't get posts to get to come to my house. No, no one's coming. 
<laughs> it's probably yeah, the Arsenal go, flag you got. It's the Arsenal flag you got in the window. He's a you know. <laughs> don't want to come. I, yeah, I literally like we literally haven't had any proper posts for over a week. It's it's really crazy. I um I got some uh, some galoobs that oh. I've got from from Ireland. It was um I had to I already had one, but it's in my cabinet. Um, so I had to get another sting to go with the sticker book because it's the same one from the sticker book it's, yeah, on the cover. Good. So I got that and I ended up getting a Brian Pillman, a Flying Brian, because I didn't have a Flying Brian. Blue or? And, uh, uh, in blue or in orange? No, in orange, the tiger okay, tights. Yeah. Um, and also I got a, I already had a red pants on Anderson. Uh, so I got the white pants on Anderson and they came from Ireland and he sent it first class and it took nearly two weeks. Yeah. And I, I actually was on the phone to the post office like, Listen, you some bitches, right? <laughs> I can't express to you how much I love galoobs. And there's free galoobs floating around somewhere. I don't know where they are. Um, and literally, they turned up the next day. So you went, uh, yeah, you went so, full, you went full Dairy Queen on the. Dude, I went. <laughs> I nearly went full cornet, man. It was, uh, it was crazy because I was just like, where the hell are they? And I said to the guy, you know, on, online, I said, look, dude, like, they ain't turned up yet, mate. And he sent me a picture of the receipt and everything. So I feel your pain, brother, when it comes yeah. to um, the post at the minute. But obviously, they've got a lot of shit on their plate and there's a lot going on. So we um, we shout out to our postal workers who keep us in figures and um, stickers and all that kind of business. All kinds of gear, yeah. Yeah. So uh, shout out to them. But yeah, 2021, strap in, you know. Hold on tight for this ride that is going to be 2021. God knows what's going to be. I've been well, I'll, I'll say this because that. you know it's it's so it's so relevant. Like, and it's you know 2021. You know what that means. <laughs> you know, it's a, yeah. It we, it's going to be a slow start to the year, as you know, because with what is it March? We could be stuck indoors. Well, there's talk of it and being until the 31st of March. So, I mean, God knows what's going to happen. But, you know, at the moment, we're completely locked down. All the schools are shut. Non-essential business is closed. My business is closed. Um, you know, so literally all that's open is Tesco's, Asda and McDonald's right now. Um, KFC too. Um, KFC. Yeah. So... Yeah, I mean, we'll we'll see what happens. But one thing you can be sure of is that myself and JB, sorry, JB, we will be keeping on with the podcast. We will be smashing out. We've got another episode that is going to be coming up soon. But we thought we'd just do this little introduction, little bit of a laugh, little bit of a joke, have a little chat and just kind of lighten the mood because sometimes people don't want to sit down and listen to a two-hour episode. Uh, it's been a bit of a shitty year last year. It's been a pretty shitty start to this year. So we thought we'd just, you know, bring a little sunshine you know, bit of a dick swinging contest with um, a bit of memorabilia that we're flashing off. But, you know, we're just having a laugh and that's what we're going to continue doing and we ain't going nowhere. And that's, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's exactly it. Uh, remember, DMs are open. Give us a shout if you're feeling like, you know, things are getting rough and getting, getting ahead of you. We are always around for chats and for, you know, we can't grapple you at the minute, but we can give you a cheap pop. Damn Skippy baby. <laughs> Lovely. Guys. Great note. Everybody take care and we will see you probably next week with WrestleMania 5. Yeah, dude. Take care. Bye-bye.